You know, I said I was going to do this every day. And then I woke up today and I was sad. And the last thing that I usually wanted to do was get on camera when I was sad. In fact, if I was really going through some stuff, I would. I used to cancel all kinds of things because I was like, I can't. I can't put myself out there. And it was interesting because um, I had this amazing breakthrough with my music. I was with under development with this label and this guy Craig Derry used to, I have to go in there every day and work on music. Whether I wanted to or not, I was signed to a label. They were developing me in New York and it was a big deal. I was super excited and there was a lot of money. They spent a lot of money. They paid a lot of money to help me. And, um, you know, I showed up one day and I was just like, I can't sing. I can't, I just want to cry. And he looked at me and he's like, you know what? As an artist, learn how to cry while you sing. I want you to sing anyways. I want you to like, just get back on that stage, get in front of that camera, use those emotions. And it was a huge breakthrough for me. And it's helped me so much in my career, in my life, because I've learned that it's, it's okay to feel sad. Um, sadness is, it's an important emotion, you know, and I, one of the things I say all the time, I'll say today is, whoever decided that our tears are less valuable than our smiles is really strange. And, you know, we live in this world where we think that we need to take a pill to feel happy rather than just allowing ourselves to feel what we feel and, you know, honoring that. And yeah, I feel so um, I'm gonna drink the cup of coffee and I'm gonna tell you about what I'm feeling and then I'm gonna go into the fun creative work stuff because it's part of the process of going through things opposed to ignoring them. Uh, I feel sad. I feel sad that we live in a world where, you know, just statistically, and a lot of people don't know this, in this country, our largest exports are weapons, human trafficking, and drugs, pharmaceuticals, and others. So, I mean, it's definitely not just me that's sad. All of those things, all of those things, and from my experiences with them, have to do with this unrest with our souls and the root cause of why we engage with all of them has to do with this place I think we all have, which when it gets extremely out of balance, allows us to do crazy things like kill each other or hurt each other and rape each other or just insanity. and. That's been something I've spent a lot of time in my life reflecting on and also trying to evolve so that it's something that I have compassion for and I want to help everyone get to better places and yet I see it and I feel like a lot of us see it and it's this underweighing sadness and we know that there's something wrong and we don't understand why. And so we live in this world where it's like, oh, you, you guys feel sad. You're, you, you feel sad. Okay, here. There's something wrong with you for those feelings. Oh, you feel angry. Okay, cool. You know what? You feel angry. Here's a pill. Here's a pill for your sadness. Look, you need to follow, go to school, get a degree, get a job, work eight hours a day, buy a house, have some kids, do it all over again, and then you die. <laughs> I was just like, I remember being like, what? That's, uh, what is that? So 
I allow myself to feel sad and I allow myself to say like it's okay to feel sad the world's kind of in a really interesting place right now and I live and I'm aware of this stuff so when I feel sad I have some tools that I have learned to get myself through my sadness opposed to ignoring my sadness without suppressing my sadness one crying highly recommend it it's healthy you know what it also keeps you looking young like people say why do you I've known you for 20 years. How come you haven't aged? I, I'm like, I cry. Seriously, it's better than Botox. Cry. You you feel this thing welling up inside of you. It's cool. There's a bathroom. There's a bedroom. There's a there's a thing. You don't have to do it in front of people. I, I'm at a point where I'll just cry in front of anybody. I don't, I don't care. I remember sitting at a subway and just like bawling. And I was like, you know what? It's okay. It's beautiful. So, one, two, I drink coffee. Three, Sometimes I'll take um, Reservatol, which is cool, but you know, actually I'll take a very minor amount of lithium aurate, which is interesting because, just real quick, lithium aurate is controversial a little bit, and I am not giving you medical advice or nutritional advice or anything, I'm just telling you what I do. So, it used to be in our water, and it's not anymore, because most of our water is not even really water, I don't even know what it is, unless we're like getting spring water and importing it. So. A small amount of that sometimes will help feel calm and it's something that existed in our bodies that we don't get enough of like a lot of things because of the way we are creating our food and water supplies um, and then I make art and just sometimes sit in my feelings and I'll allow myself to feel and continue with my day as usual and be honest about it and I feel like our emotions, it's like you can only go as high as you can go low and as an artist and a creator and a, a lover of life and people, I, I'll take the lows and the highs because it's like this, it's like colors on a canvas and when we limit those colors, I feel like we're limiting our true expression and I think we should just create a world around us where we can be free and if we want to cry or we need to scream or, you know, not at people but just, you know, at the trees or whatever or we and, okay, now I get to the fun stuff, because this is usually what happens. Crazy, when you just allow yourself to feel something, you kind of come to the other side. So, we are still doing Black Ritual, because we can't reach like 10 million people at once. Um, not yet, working on it. If you're not on my mailing list, will you please join it? I promise you that my newsletters are not boring. Um, you can always just delete them, but it means I can get in touch with you forever. Social media is like sometimes they come and go and they move and they delete profiles, all kinds of stuff. So you can find out on my Facebook page. Um, if you comment or click the link and put your email in, you'll find me and we'll send you our once a year discount code. I'm about to release a bunch of new items. I'm going to drink coffee and edit and send me the best sad songs that you found so I can listen to sad music and edit today. Um, and make art and then um, some people bought some really cool stuff yesterday I'm so excited I have some people that have bought several of my jackets and wear them all the time and keep buying more of them and it makes me so happy I love sending my jackets all over the world and I finally figured out how we can make packaging that'll make me happy I'm gonna have a packaging talk for a minute and then I'm gonna go to work because I've been struggling with our packaging for a long time so I didn't want to use more plastic and then but yeah it's really hard to move stuff from a humid place to a cold place with all plastic and I didn't want to import and make a bunch of boxes that you throw away so I finally had brainstormed it last night till about two in the morning how to make what I'm we're gonna start making which are ritual keepsake black boxes it's gonna take us a minute so I don't know if we'll be able to get it out for all these orders but it's about creating a box which your item will come in, but then you can also use it as like your a box to keep magical, important, precious things. And I want to make it out of the leftovers from your item and or like leathers and silks and stuff. So that's exciting. Because I'm, if I can make you something that you won't throw away, then I'm okay with using it to ship things. It's just that I try to use as little as possible. And the issue with plastic is 
if you haven't been to a developing country and seen what's happening in the rivers and the oceans and the lakes, it's like in developing countries, they don't have recycling centers in a lot of places. So in fact, if anybody works in recycling, uh, find me, I have an opportunity and I have an idea. And I think it will make somebody in that industry, somebody out there deal with like waste and recycling because I don't know anything about it, but I have an opportunity and an idea. I think it could change things and also make a lot of money. I'll give it, just, just uh, I'll help or I'll give you the idea, but I need a person down to make some stuff happen here because I don't know anything about it, the, the mechanics of it, but I know I see an opportunity. <clears throat> um, point is, I see these beautiful oceans and rivers and lakes just being clogged with plastic or it's being burned because there's nothing we can do about it. So reducing our use of plastic is huge and I'm happy that it's starting to become a trend. You know, you reusable bags and bamboo cups and bamboo this and bamboo silverware and reusable and even metal. Um, because we have enough plastic on the planet, I think if we just keep recycling it, reusing it, we don't really need to make a lot more, but it's also been hard for me because so much packaging is plastic. And, you know, sometimes my stuff has ended up in DHL boxes just wrapped in a tiny piece of plastic because I had to put it in something that was the least plastic I could use. So I'm really excited about this new packaging idea and I'm super excited to get back there and figure out how we can actually use recycling and creativity to make the most beautiful keepsake boxes ever while also hopefully putting a dent in the problem of waste. Um, so that's exciting. And I remember being a little kid and like making my own keepsake boxes and I was like having these beautiful memories of how, you know, having that would be cool. And I'd love to give that to all of you. So anyways, gonna go work on releasing new products for Eco Everywhere and some new couture. And if you haven't already done it, I hope you're on the mailing list. You can DM me or email us with any questions. Also, if you're mailing us, blah, 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 you know how to find us, um, email. And also just a heads up everybody, I'm going to have to change our prices. Um, pricing stuff's been really hard for me and I think I finally found a formula and I realized why we had some hiccups was that with my pricing, I wasn't actually including myself. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I spent many years just like putting all the money that we made back into the company to pay for the tailors and the materials and making your items, but there sometimes wasn't any left over for me. Um, so I've worked with people on calculating what it actually costs to do this and take care of myself. And I had a tendency my whole life of putting everything ahead of me and sometimes not taking care of myself. And I'm working really hard now on taking care of myself so that there's more of myself to take care of everybody else. Um, so I'm going to be in the next probably couple weeks formulating heavily with my team on real price points. And I know this is hard for some of you because you're like, it's so expensive, but I want to break down where the money goes. In order for me to make a jacket, starts with a process of designing it, which is what I do. And I draw it, or I see it in my mind, and I draw it, and I draw things, and then after I draw it, I have to make a sample. So I make a prototype. Um, that prototype is what you see on the website. And because I don't mass produce unless it's ordered by a store or customers, I usually only make one or two until you start ordering them or store does because I don't want to make a hundred and ever throw one away. I believe in as little waste as possible for our entire company. So we produce on demand and it's a choice that I made for now. Um, so once I have a sample, when you order one, now the way that we're working, unless you're a store, is we ask you for your measurements because it's easier for us to shift it and move it a little bit than to try to fit all of your I don't believe it's so cold in LA. So, okay, when you order a thing, Brenda, 
who's in the Philippines, who's currently in a typhoon and lost her power, so please send prayers or wishes or whatever. And we gotta get her a generator, so I can't have her go down like that. Um, and the typhoons are scary there. We are so fortunate to not have that here. Um, so Brenda, when you order, puts it into a sauna. And then once it's in the sauna, we usually ask you for your measurements and pictures and social networks. Not because we're trying to like do anything other than get a feel for you. And then we, depending on how busy we are, it goes into our production queue. But we can't, for the big jackets, we wait for the measurements. Um, because there's less of a chance of a return and returns are expensive and we try not to waste things. So we really want to make it right the first time. And then it goes, we, we buy the material, which we get skin by skin. So we try to find the highest quality leather and a person literally goes and picks it skin by skin and the silk. And then it is transported from one island to another because I wanted my tailors to live with their families. So we go between two islands. And once it's transported, then it's checked again. And then our master tailor takes the original pattern and then adjusts it and makes you a new pattern to your size and cuts it, all little pieces of paper. And then they cut the leather, all the little pieces. And some of our patterns have like 300 pieces of paper. It's crazy. In fact, it's something we're trying to figure out the best solution for because there's a lot of pattern pieces. Um, and then they cut every single piece to you and then they stitch it together. And some of those, some of the stuff takes a, a week. One person who's a master, who's been doing this for 30 years, who's can make anything because there's hundreds of little pieces. Um, so I have to pay for all that and our operating costs, which I won't get into is like just breathing alone is mm, mm, a lot. Just being open is a lot. Just being able to put these videos. And so our prices have to include covering the process of creation, making it and getting it to you. And if we don't, then what's happened in the past, if I didn't charge enough, is that I'm giving it away and sometimes actually having to go into what profit I had to give the jacket away. I actually gave away 10 jackets to a wholesale account because I had miscalculated in the very beginning how much it cost me to make. So I, I had to live with that and I believe in learning from my mistakes and evolving and growing, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up that some of our prices may lower and some might go up, but our prices are based on treating people like human beings. Um, and I'm a proponent of fair labor. I have my tailors, they have children, they have families. Most of them are having more babies. You know, I want my operations manager to have a generator so she has power because her husband has to leave for years to work in another country. Like it's about taking care of people. And for me, I honestly spend all of my money on mostly organic food and making art. Occasionally a glass of red wine. I, I probably should just be a brand ambassador for a wine company and Kavita, because I swear I give Kavita like most of my money. Um, I love Kavitas, they're amazing. Probiotics are awesome, I suggest one a day. And they taste good and they're way better than soda and I'm not trying to be commercial, I really believe in this thing. Um, if you don't drink them, I've literally gotten people off soda left, right, and center with Kavita and it's so good for you. Anyway, so I'm gonna go release new products and work on our prices. And if you watched all of this, thank you so much.